Hi, I'm Dr. Valerie Baker. You're watching my vlog. Today I'm going to talk to you about the real danger of stress. I promise you this is not what you think. I'm going to talk about a great spiritual danger of stress. And that one, in turn, causes the symptoms that you're used to hearing about, such as health-related and financial and relationship and career consequences of that great spiritual danger of stress. I'm going to give you some tools to cut through stress easily and effectively. And I'm going to remind you, or maybe talk to you for the first time, about why it is not your fault that stress is so habitual. And we're all in the same boat in this society. We're so conditioned to stress. I'm going to explain to you why we're conditioned to stress. It's like a spell that we're all uh, under. And it is related to that great spiritual danger of it. So I'm going to demystify this and give you some suggestions for how to effectively release that spell for good. All right. What's on the other side of stress? Why do we want to get rid of it? The greatest magic. Really, everything that you want from life is just on the other side of stress. If you remember from last week's vlog, I described stress as the state of resisting reality and in this state we're closed we're closed off and nothing can come in or out and we know that we're closed off because our mind is closed we're telling ourselves a story that causes anxiety depression causes some addictive behaviors uh, and uh, causes us to feel bad about ourselves uh, or about our life situation and it really 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 sucks uh, we feel it in the body, we feel muscular tension, we feel it in the breathing because it becomes shallow and irregular, and we see it in our behavior because we um, try to escape the uncomfortable situation through behaviors such as overeating, or indulging in uh, drinking, other substance use, uh, TV, uh, sex, shopping, anything that we use to escape. Work is a fine escape uh, tool. It's important to recognize it for what it is. So why, why do we need to combat stress? Uh, allow ourselves to go from this to this because when we do this, greatest magic opens up for us. We become um, basically indestructible because life takes us by the hand and gives us its greatest gifts helps us to tap into our greatest gifts and bring them out fully into the world. Things like self-esteem, confidence, self-doubt, all of those become non-issues when we're tapped into that current of life that moves us, when we get that ego out of the way, because those things only exist on on in the dimension of the ego where we feel like this constricted and closed off and that's all part and parcel of stress and the tools to get out of this state are so easy before i go any further i'd like to express my deepest gratitude to you for watching my vlog if you've seen my last week's vlog i've shared something deeply personal the biggest stress of my life over the past year and i've received such an outpouring of support and love um, and um, offers of help um, i am so deeply moved and if you've commented and if you've said something along the lines of I admire how strong and resilient you are, I want to say thank you. It is true to the extent that it's true about you. But sometimes you may not feel like you're strong or resilient. We forget. And again, the spell of forgetfulness, it's stress, right? We get sucked into that state of stress where we forget who we really are. Are. That is the great danger of stress, that we forget who we really are. We are disconnected from our true self, our true reality, which is, which is abundant, which is 
indestructible, which is joy, which is connected with everyone and everything at all times. It's stress and this illusion of, you know, our egos being, you know, small and separate from everything else that keep us stuck in this state of unhappiness and settling for the life that we don't like, right? And I want to also say, uh, uh, back to the comments that I've seen that really moved me, somebody said, well, I understand your point about resisting reality, but I need to resist my reality because I hate my job. And I, if I don't resist that reality, I'll end up settling for it. And this is such a brilliant point, and I want to make that distinction. I hope you really hear this. I'll try to explain as, as best I can. When we exit, um, excuse me, resisting reality and settling for your current life situation are, um, they're actually part of the same parcel. It may feel to you that because you don't like your current reality, you need to resist it and that's your way out. And the opposite is actually true. What you need to do is accept your reality, open up, get rid of that stress resisting, right? Open up so that you tap into creative solutions. You tap into a bigger vision for your life. You connect with your heart's desire and none of it is possible when you're resisting reality and you're closed off. Does that make sense? Let me know in the comments if this makes sense to you. And if there is anything that you feel you may be settling for in your life inadvertently for different reasons, maybe because you're not ready to make a change or maybe it's um, you don't feel like you can and maybe it's even too painful to think big and dream big because you feel like um, you feel like it's not for you. You'll never get there, or maybe somebody around you is telling you now it's not for you. Tell me if there is any such thing in your life that you feel that you've outgrown, but you're still settling for for whatever reason. I would love to support you in making that breakthrough because just like you said about me, about my strength and resilience that you saw in the situation, the only thing I did was to eventually snap out of that resistance and denial and begin using the tools that I've shared with you in my last video. And I'll share more tools with you today on how to release stress, okay? And I also want to share with you some magic because some of you commented uh, you wanted to know more about our trip to see John of God and what happened. So John of God is uh, a Brazilian medium. He doesn't refer to himself as a healer. He says, I'm a medium and I channel entities of light. Who are those entities of light? They are um, uh, actual people who lived on earth and were healers and when they passed on their spirits um, felt that they wanted to keep on doing the work and uh, John of God makes himself available as a, as a channel to bring these entities of light um, to assist them in healing people. So when we came there um, we realized on some level very quickly that we really could not be closed, closed-minded, closed-hearted, that in order for this to work, we needed to be really open and receptive to be in this current of energy, this current of healing. And um, it's just a sight to see if you ever get a chance. And if you want to mo know more about this, uh, I might make a whole separate episode just on that experience, but it's really very special. Everybody wears white and um, people congregate in um, meditation halls where they, they stay in, in, in the current and they support it by meditating. And 
John of God pre performs something that he calls a spiritual surgery. When you're in this current, there is an intervention that happens, and when you go, uh, when you leave, you're told not to do anything strenuous, to relax and sleep. And I thought, well, um, uh, whatever. <laughs> so when, uh, when we left, I was very surprised to feel that I had no energy, that I could not do anything. I had to lie down and my husband felt the same way. And um, so there is something real that's happening on the physical level as well. I don't have an explanation to it. The only thing I want to say about it, again, back to the magic that happens when you stop doing this and you start doing this in your body, your mind, your behavior and your breath right if you remember these are the four domains that you can intervene in in order to go from the stressed and close to the open and relaxed state right and this is an example of the magic that happens when we returned from this trip and mind you, John of God also says, I don't do the, the healing. Doctors do the healing, but I help to remove obstacles to it, which is a very interesting point. Oftentimes, healing doesn't happen for us because there are some internal obstacles that need to be removed. And although I don't work with physical ailments like that, just from my own experience in my own life and my clients' experiences, I can see how their health states have shifted once they've opened their minds, they've opened their bodies and learned how to breathe and behave in ways that promoted that state of consciousness that allows them to stay fully present in that current of, of um, healing. You don't need to go to Brazil to be in that current of healing although you can and it's a wonderful opportunity it this current is available to us at all times all we need to do is to open and receive and let life take us by the hand and we cannot do this when we're stressed okay so what happened when we came back uh, what I could attribute to uh, our trip although uh, we'll never know for sure but Tom who had no diagnosis for a long time, having seen every possible doctor, um, was connected with a doctor who diagnosed him for the first time. Uh, well, he pinpointed, uh, pinpoint, he um, identified <laughs> the nature of his neurological condition. Um, and hopefully the, the course of treatment is in sight. So, um, whether or not you are going through something big and stressful in your life right now or you are experiencing the barrage of everyday little stresses that make you go like this, right? Um, closing in your mind, body, breathing, and behavior. I have some tools for you that are very easy and I'd like to share with you. Often people ask me, Okay, at the end of the day, I'm so wound up, I can't sleep, what can I do? And I say, not much, <laughs> not much. You need to do something throughout the day in order to get to that point at the end of the day where you can relax and unwind. And I'm going to share with you a couple of breathing practices that are very easy that you can do throughout the day to keep your nervous system from being all the way in the sympathetic activation in the stressed out state and bring it to parasympathetic activation which is a relaxed state. Uh, yogic breathing techniques are very powerful. If you feel dizzy or lightheaded at any point just return your breath to normal. Um, a couple of techniques I'm going to demonstrate for you today. One is excellent for relaxing the muscles that are habitually tensed from habitual stress as you know, it affects the posture too. There is a slight rounding of the shoulders that happens, right? So our muscles shorten uh, here in this area. So you can, even before you do this breathing practice, you can do something simple like connect 
your hands behind your back and breathe into this area allowing it to open up and begin to release just do it for a few deep breaths mm. and when you return to seated just notice if there is more space you can also move your arms um, rotate your shoulders you can move side to side allowing your arms to dangle this all allows more movement here and allows more breath to come in so a breathing technique i want to introduce to you today is called staircase breathing you can watch me demonstrate and then follow along inhale fully exhale fully and at the bottom of the exhale begin to inhale in little sips as if you're climbing a staircase going and a long exhale and again and then glide down the mountain and then we'll reverse the sequence the pattern inhale a long breath and exhale little steps inhale a long breath exhale little steps and then return your breath to normal do it um, for two or three rounds to experience the full benefit And another very simple and discreet technique is quite simply breathing in on the count of four, breathing out on the count of four. You might have heard this before. It is a really fine way to also center your mind because when the breathing is regular, the mind also stays centered. And you might notice that your thoughts also shift without you having to do anything about this. In my next video, I'll share with you more tools that you can use for your mind directly. Please ask me any questions. Uh, would you like more tools for the mind, for the body, for the breathing or behavior, which is the area where you'd like to intervene to undo the stress? And the last point that I want to make, I want to circle back to why stress is so dangerous. Because when we're closed off, we're disconnected from ourselves, from our true selves. We're disconnected from others. We're disconnected from the current of our own lives. This is the greatest danger. Everything else follows, right? When you have financial trouble, it's because you're disconnected. You're disconnected from yourself, from your true powers, including the powers to unleash financial abundance. When you experience health problems, that may also have something to do with stress, relationship problems, you bet. <laughs> when you're fully relaxed, when you're fully connected with yourself, all you see in other people is beauty. All you see in yourself is beauty. You're comfortable in your own skin. And this is a greatest, greatest um, gift that we all have in life to be comfortable in our own skin. And we get disconnected from this gift by cultural conditioning that tells us that we're not enough or we're too much or we're just plain wrong and this is why something that i've alluded i've alluded to in the beginning of this video this is why it is so hard to overcome this conditioning to stay stressed this is why we have to use these tools and we need a community of people who support us in this work for me now you are this community i feel accountable to you to show up every week and share with you from my toolbox and tell you how i'm doing with my stress and i encourage you to connect with like-minded people you can uh join my facebook group you'll find like-minded people there and you can uh, stay connected to this vlog i hope that you comment I, I will stay in conversation with you and uh, answer any questions that you have. And I want to encourage you to set an intention, a very revolutionary intention for the rest of the year and for the new year to stay connected with your true 
self to keep working to overcome this cultural conditioning that keeps us separated from ourselves, keeps us under this spell, this delusion that we are not enough, that we are not good enough, we're too much, we're, we're, there's something wrong with us. As a matter of fact, you are an absolute perfection manifest but this cultural conditioning this delusion keeps you in the state of forgetfulness and that state is accountable for pretty much every problem that um, you may be encountering in life and the same is true for me we're all in the same boat so thank you so much for being here today thank you for being a precious part of your true selfie tribe I'm sending you much love from my heart to yours and I look forward to reading your comments and responding. Have a fabulous week. Stay in your heart.